gather with you in God's house of a chance to sing his praise and be reminded of his great love for us. So glad you'd be gathered with us today and especially welcome those of you who are joining us online as well. A couple of announcements as we begin. First of all, we are continuing with our Loved and Sent series. If you remember, we did four weeks back in the fall talking about God's love for us, how he has called us as his people and shaped us and formed us together. And then we took a break because we're getting into Advent and Christmas. And now that the, the holiday season has passed, we want to pick up with another four weeks, this time focusing on kind of the second half, on that, that scent aspect. What does it mean that the God who has called us and loved us is now sending us out into the world with his love, choosing to use us to bless others. What does it look like for us? So, <coughs> excuse me, we hope you come back over the next four weeks as we unpack and explore what it means that God is sending us out into the world. Second thing is this, is as you're coming in, there is this pack and play back there that was pretty well filled with diapers and wet wipes. That is going to support Advice and Aid Crisis Pregnancy Center. They work with, with young women who are experiencing an unexpected pregnancy, helping to, to counsel them and, and guide them to choose life, but then not drop them at that decision, but instead continue to walk with them, help them to carry that child to term, help them as they're becoming new moms, learning what it means to care for this child, providing diapers and wet wipes for them. It's a very tangible way that we can be in 
involved in supporting these young moms. So we would encourage you, as you're able, to, to bring some back in, and we'll, we'll stack it in there before we take it over and try to bless those parents. And the last thing is next Sunday, the 29th, is our semi-annual congregational assembly. Nothing to vote on this time, but this is a ministry update time to let you sh- to share with you some of the good things that are going on here at Trinity, let you know the v- different ministries that are happening and how you can be connected and involved. So we encourage you to come to that uh, next Sunday after service information is in your bulletin. There are more announcements in your bulletin, even more online in our e-news section. Love for you to go there, connect, and, and find out what's going on. But right now, I want to encourage you to stand and greet one another with, with God's love.
It's bandaging the broken or washing filthy feet. Here I am, Lord, send me. If it's loving one another, even when we don't agree. Here I am, Lord. If I'm poor, if I'm wealthy, I'll serve you just the same. Here I am, Lord, send me on the mountain or the valley. I will choose to praise. Here I am. Continue with our call to worship and invocation. O oh God the Father, who created the world for your glory, who created the plan of salvation to redeem the world when we fell into sin. O oh God the Son, who has redeemed the whole world to God by your blood, who is Lord over all things and head of your body, the church. O oh God the Holy Spirit, who is the Comforter, sent by the Father and the Son to lead us into all truth, who sends us and guides us on your saving mission to a lost world. Come now and bless us again with your loving presence. Amen. As we come before our loving and sending God, we remember how we have fallen short of His plan in our lives. Lord, hear our confession as we pour out our hearts to you. I, a poor sinner, plead guilty before God of all my sins. I have lived as if God did not matter and as if I mattered most. I have not let his love have its way with me, so my love for others has failed. There are those whom I have hurt and those whom I have failed to help. I am sorry for this and I ask for grace. I want to do better. Receive the forgiveness that Christ won for you by his suffering, death, and resurrection. Your sins are forgiven in Christ. Go in the strength, peace, and joy of our Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Loving and sending Lord, Teach us to remember that we are but the dust into which your spirit breathes the breath of life, earthen vessels you have selected to be the treasures of your grace. Lead us to be ambassadors of your kingdom. Show us how to love our neighbor selflessly. Mold us into faithful servants and obedient followers. Retrace our lost image and form us into the image of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. This is the time in our service where we pause to remember the Lord with our offerings. As he has blessed us and cared for us, we want to be able to be a blessing to others, to share 
those gifts and to help them experience the care of God in their lives. And, and so as you're able, we would invite you to participate in the offering. You can leave your gift at the offering plate at the back of service on your way out, or you can use one of our many online giving options. We'd also encourage you that if you or someone you love is going through a difficult season in life, that, that you not go through that alone. Send us a note at careinfo at tlcms.org, and we as a community of faith will be praying for that situation in the weeks ahead. And we continue now with the reading of God's Word. First lesson today is from Isaiah 43, verses 1 through 7. But now, thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba in exchange for you because you are precious in my eyes and honored and I love you. I give men in return for you, peoples in exchange for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the the north, give up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. This is the word of the Lord. The second lesson is from Colossians 1, verses 15 to 23. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. In the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that, every, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was t- pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. And you, who once were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death, in order to present you holy and blameless, and above reproach before him. If indeed you continue in that faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you have heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. This is the word of the Lord. The children are now invited forward for the children's message. All right, come on down, have a seat. My name is Beth, and I'm excited to be here with you guys this morning. Can you see what I brought with me? Suckers. Yes, very good. Um, Okay, do you guys have a favorite flavor of these? What's your favorite flavor? Cherry, great. What do you think? Favorite flavor? The mystery one? Ooh, bold. Grape, awesome. The root beer ones, those are good, yeah. Blueberry ones, awesome. What, do you guys know what your least favorite one is? Like if you picked one out and you were like, oh no, not that one. What do you think? Broccoli, broccoli if there's a broccoli flavored sucker. <laughs> I would agree. I don't know if I would want that either. What do you think, Dora? A carrot flavored one? What about like butterscotch? I love those. You do? Okay, well, butterscotch is my least favorite one. So if there was only yours too, awesome. So like I try to avoid those when I look through the bag of my different flavors available. You know, so if there's a butterscotch, I'm going to avoid that. And if there's a cream soda, then that's my favorite flavor. I'm going to take that. Yeah, do you like that one too? Cool. Oh, it might be. You're right. You might not like it. And so there's different, there's different flavors that we like or might avoid. What about bubble gum? Do you guys like bubble gum flavored? 
I'm with you. I'm like a no, no thank you on that. And you know what? That kind of reminds me of the gospel reading we're about to hear from Pastor Phil. Um, In it, Jesus is reminding us that he doesn't treat us like different flavors of suckers. That he doesn't pick his favorites and ignore his least favorites, right? He doesn't treat people that way. But sometimes we might treat people that way, right? Like sometimes when we're Picking teams, we might have someone be the last one picked. Or sometimes we might not be the most kind to our classmates or our siblings or something like that, right? Sometimes it's, we, we're not able to do that all the time, right? One in my class is right, that can be hard, can it? And so, that is a good option, isn't it? But what's cool is that Jesus He never forgets. He never has a hard time remembering to love all people. We can know that no matter what's going on, no matter what we've done or what's happening around us, that Jesus' love is always there for us and for all people. He doesn't leave anyone out. There's no one that he's going to avoid, right? Like we avoid suckers that we don't really like. Um, So there's there's never a situation where Jesus' love isn't there for us, okay? And so we can remember that. And one of the things we get to do because that's true is we get to share that love with other people. And so we can look for ways we can love other people. What do you think? (laughs) One of the ways we can love other people is by sharing suckers with them, isn't it? And so um, that's a good thought. And so after the service, if you guys want to find me, I'll be in the back, and then I'll give you a sucker after the service, okay? If it's okay with your parents, okay? And so we get to share that love with other people. Oh, great. Well, you can ask her first, and then I'll see you at the after service. After, oh, well, well, let's pray first. Sorry, I was confusing. I understand. Let's pray, and then you guys can go have a seat, okay? Let's hold our hands, bow our heads, close our eyes, and I'll say a line, and then you guys pray it up to God. Dear God, you love us. Help us to remember Jesus taught us to love each other. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys can go have a seat now, and I'll see you after service. That's right. from John chapter 15, beginning at verse 12. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command to you so that you will love one another. But when the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. And you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please pray with me. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you have loved us with an everlasting love, and you sent your Son, Jesus, to draw us back to you. Lord, we pray that you would come again today through the power of your Spirit. Be with us. Remind us of your love, and then in that love, send us also to others. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Along a certain seacoast that was known to be very dangerous, there was a lone little lighthouse. And it was staffed by the residents of that seacoast, very faithfully using that lighthouse to guard other ships and to warn them of the dangers of the shore. And every so often a ship would still be be blown against the rocks and then the members of this lighthouse committee would go out in search and rescue those people and bring them safely back to shore. Well, after a number of years of of faithful service, some of the members of that lighthouse committee began to look around, and they noticed that the lighthouse was beginning to look a little bit run down, a little bit small, a little bit obsolete. 
And so they put together a committee and they, they raised some funds to build a new and a bigger lighthouse. It was so successful that that lighthouse soon became the center of the community and lots of different gatherings and social events were held there in the lighthouse. And soon it was so popular and so many activities were going on there that the members of the lighthouse committee found that they didn't really have a whole lot of time to go out, search, and rescue anymore because of all the social activities that were happening there in their lighthouse. So they hired a special rescue squad to take on the work of going out and doing that rescue so that the social life there in the lighthouse could continue unabated. And that worked pretty well for a while. And then there was one particularly bad storm and the rescue squad went out and, and rescued a number of people and brought them back into the lighthouse. Only the, the rest of the people who were there at the lighthouse noted that the people who came in, well, they were rather dirty. And, and they were wet from being in the ocean water and they were dripping on all of the nice furniture and, and, and they're shivering and, and the mess that they created was kind of getting in the way of the social activities that had been planned for that evening. And what could they do to, to prevent this, this problem from happening? And so some of the people there commented that, well, the purpose of the lighthouse is to go and to rescue these people from the sea. To which another contingent suggested that if they were really so focused on rescuing people from the sea, that perhaps they should move a little bit further down the coast and build a lighthouse so that they could rescue those people so that the social events could continue without interruption. And that's just what happened. A small group set out separate from that first lighthouse and built their own little lighthouse and began faithfully to watch the coast and, and rescue people. But... After a while, they began to notice that their little lighthouse was kind of small and run down and, and a little bit out of date, and so they formed a committee to build a new lighthouse. And today, if you go to that certain dangerous coast, what you will find is quite a number of lighthouses all up and down the shore and very few people being rescued from the sea. In many ways, that story of the lighthouse is the story of the church. Sometimes it's as if we in the church have lost our way and lost our purpose. I mean, it started out very good, right? Focus on saving people and bringing them the good news of Jesus. But somewhere along the way, it's as if the church has begun to lose its focus. A little bit of mission drift creeps in. And we want to be able to gather together and to welcome people in and to enjoy these, these relationships and the friendships that come here. And so we focus on that, but then these, this, these social events come up and, and it's wonderful and good, but it sometimes draws us away from the purpose. And we form these relationships and sometimes they're rather superficial. We ask, how are you? We say, well, I'm fine, which means there's feelings I'm not expressing. Right? And when we do gather for Bible study, oftentimes there's this very quick turn from studying the Bible to sharing our opinions. Or perhaps it shifts into social commentary and talking about politics. And there's very little conversation about Jesus or sacrifice on the cross, and even less about what that sacrifice means for me in my faith. Even beyond that, there's even less activity actually going out and seeking to share that good news with others. We've lost our purpose. And as I look around at our society and the church at large in America, that's what I see also. And sometimes I wonder if, if it's just me because I live in this world or, or if you notice it too. But the church in America, if you notice these trends, has been in decline for a long time. And I think COVID and the years after COVID have, have opened our eyes somewhat to that because COVID was this, this great accelerator, but the trends were in existence long before and have our our going to continue far beyond COVID's impact. But the church in America has lost its way, has lost its purpose, has lost its focus. 
And there's a lot of activity going on in churches all throughout America and through our communities, and very little that's actually seeking to connect people to Jesus. And it weighs on me and it breaks my heart, not because there are some chairs here that are empty, not because we're struggling for institutional survival, because we're not, at least not here at Trinity. It breaks my heart because it represents people who are still suffering and dying apart from the news of Jesus. And so our Loved and Sent series is meant and designed to help us rediscover our purpose and refocus on that mission that God has given to us. It's meant to summarize our faith in a way that we can, we can wrap our, our minds around and hold on to, in a way that we can then begin to take that faith and share it with others. And so last fall... We talked about what it meant to be loved by God. We talked about that using the Apostles' Creed and those three persons of the Trinity as as God, our Heavenly Father, who created us and designed us and formed us in His image. And God the Son who was sent to redeem us and God the Holy Spirit who was sent to sanctify us and to help us live into the image that God originally designed for us. We talked about how we were chosen by God's grace, each one of us. That God didn't choose favorites like these little dumb, dumb suckers Beth was talking about, but he chooses each one of us, loves every one of us as unique and special, as different as we are. We talked about how God has used his word to call us and to shape us as his people. We talked about how he has drawn us into community, into relationship with one another so that we can walk with each other in this life and support each other in this task. And now we're going to make this shift into what it means to be sent. We can't understand really what it means to be sent. We really can't even understand what it means to be loved by God until we understand the real issue. We must understand the problem of sin. See, without that, it's easy to hear this message that God loves us and God cares for us and and to turn God into this sort of this this doting old man who just is going to give us whatever we want, this fairy godmother, this Santa Claus figure who's just passing out presents, right? As long as we leave a reasonably good life, as long as we avoid the kind of moral failure that would land us in prison, well, then of course God's going to love us and of course he's going to bless us and of course he's going to take care of us. Why wouldn't he, right? That's if we don't understand the issue of sin. See, yes, God created us in his image. and He designed good for us, but then came this really significant thing. Somewhere between the first article of the creed where God creates us in his image and the second article where he sends his son. Somewhere between Genesis 1 where God creates us and the rest of the scripture of God's redeeming love comes the story of Genesis 3, of the fall into sin, of how Adam and Eve chose to rebel against God and to go their own way. And by do, so doing, separated themselves from his love, separated themselves from life. It's a story how you and I also have chosen to go away from God and have found ourselves suffering and dying. We sang it in our opening song, right? It's that sin promised joy and life, but it's led us to the grave. Our selfish, sinful actions seem so good at the time. They seem like they're promising fulfillment, but in the end, they lead only to suffering and death. We curve in on ourselves. We cut others off. We seize and grab, and we choose actions that destroy the life that God desires for us. And it ends in death. Scripture says the wages of sin is death. The result of our actions is death. Physical death and spiritual death and eternal death. And for every one of us that is going to face death, is going to face the end of our life, that's every one of us, the root cause is sin. It's an issue 
that we have to reckon with and we have to deal with. This is the rocky shore. This is the reason we need a rescue, the reason we need a lighthouse. And God sent Jesus to be the answer to sin. This is the love of God. And God could have wiped us out. He could have destroyed all of his creation and started over fresh. But it was the love of God for us, his creation, even as we had sinned, even as we had rebelled against him and twisted and hurt his good creation, that instead of obliterating us, God would choose to redeem us, to rescue us, that God would send his son into this world, be parted from his son, give his son over to suffering and death, that he might not be separated from us forever. And Jesus was sent by God to be the answer to sin, to draw us back to him, to rescue us out of the suffering, the slavery that we find ourselves in because of our own actions and to bring us freedom and life. Our Isaiah reading begins to make this clear for us. Isaiah 43, God says, But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. With just those words, it might be easy to just think about how God is loving us and caring for us, that doting old man. But he goes on to explain later in verse 8, I give men in return for you peoples in exchange for your life. The problem of sin is so great that it's leading to death. And God chooses to give not just peoples, but one person, his son, in exchange for us. God chooses to give his son Jesus to death on the cross that you and I might be drawn back to him. A reading from Colossians also highlights this. Colossians 1, And you, who once were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he is now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death. Each one of us was opposed to God. Each one of us, it says, was hostile in mind, acting against God, and yet God reconciled us to himself through the suffering and death of Jesus. That's the love of God for you and for me, that he would give up his son for us. This is a foundational issue of life. This is literally a life and death issue. Each one of us has to come to terms with this issue of sin in our life before death comes. Nothing else is as important as understanding this and understanding the rescue that God has performed on our behalf through Jesus Christ. And this is where loved becomes sent. God's love compels him to send Jesus as the answer to sin, to redeem us, to rescue us, to pull us from that water back safely to shore. Right, this is the why of Christmas that we just celebrated. Christmas is not about parties and decorations and celebrations and cookies and, and fond memories. Christmas is about God sending his son into the midst of a broken world to be born in that stable in the mess and the muck of our lives to experience cold and hunger and rejection and suffering that he might draw us to himself. It's the sending love of God. That's the point that our gospel makes, John 15. But when the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. And you also will bear witness because you have been with me. This is the sending purpose of God, that God the Father sends the Son God the Son sends the Spirit to bear witness about Him and to live in our hearts. And God the Spirit sends us to others to testify to others about this love of God. This is the sending purpose of God. And here's something else you must understand. It's not so much that God's church has a mission, but that God's mission has 
a church. He said again, it's not so much that God's church has a mission, but that God's mission has a church. The mission starts with God. The mission lives with God. God, in his love, sends his son Jesus, comes down, rescues us, draws us out, brings us into that lighthouse, builds us together as his church because of his love, because of his purpose, because of his mission. And then he sends us out to bring others in. It's not as if God creates this church and then he has to figure out something for us to do to keep us out of trouble. And so he's like, oh, I guess I'll send them on a mission. I guess I'll invent this thing called mission and send them out. No, God has this mission to seek and to save the lost. And that starts with you and I. And as he seeks us out and as he saves us and as he draws us back in and he forms us into this church, Then he chooses in love to be part of the ones that he sends out to bring that love to others. The mission starts and always remains with God. And God in love chooses to use us as part of his tool, as part of his means of bringing that saving love to others. But it always starts and ends with God. And if the church fails in its mission, God is still in control. He is still ascending God. He is still finding ways to bring that saving love to others. And the church has, in many and various ways over the years, failed in its sending mission. And God still finds a way. There's this little event 500 years ago that we love to trumpet every October 31 and beat our chest Reformation Day, the story of Martin Luther, the great reformer, the church of his day had lost its way, had been consumed by a quest for money and power. And so God raises up this little German monk and helps him rediscover the message, the gospel, helps him rediscover the mission and uses him to bring the saving news of God's love to people who who were in need. Happened in the history of America. Great revivals that swept through our country as people were falling away from church and then were drawn back in. Happened in China. There's a communist party swept into power and outlawed the church and executed many of the church leaders and thought they had exterminated the church. What they found years later is the party began to relax its control that all it had succeeded in doing was driving the church underground where it grew exponentially. It's happening today in Iran. Muslim militant Iran where brave women are taking the message of the gospel from house to house to people who need to hear about Jesus a threat to their own lives. The mission is God's. It always remains God's. And when the church struggles and the church fails, God still finds a way to bring his saving love to others. But God loves us enough that he chooses to send us to others. God loves us enough that he chooses to use us as part of this great mission that is his to seek and to save others. This is the church, the purpose of the church. This is the purpose of every believer that you and I who have experienced this love of God, who have been rescued from that water, who have discovered the consequences of our sin and the freedom that comes in Christ, our calling And our purpose is to bring that to others. And it is a sign of God's love for us that he would choose to use us, failing as we are, to be the means and the instruments by which he brings that love to those who need to hear it. And it is literally a life and death issue. Nothing else is as important as this. Right? There are still people who are dying off that rocky shore. And for all the other dreams and goals and aspirations and desires that we have in life, all of that pales in comparison to this great mission, this sending purpose that God has laid on our hearts when he called us as his own. And this is where loved and sent can help us rediscover our purpose. To hear again that you are loved 
You are loved by a God who created you in His image, who has redeemed you by His Son, Jesus, who has sent His Holy Spirit to live in your hearts. And you are sent by that God to bring that love to others. You were loved. You were sent. So live in that love and share that love with those you meet. Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Please stand. We join now in confessing our faith in the God who has saved us and sent us using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We join our song of the day.
there's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, we thank you for your unfailing love, choosing us to redeem us, call us to your own. We thank you, Lord, that you have also sent us out that others might hear of your love. Lord, send again your spirit to strengthen us for the calling you've placed on our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who need your healing power. We pray in particular for Shelley Crawford, Tom Dempsey, Jenna Fryermuth, Kevin Harlow, Marcy Harness, Ralph Schwartz, T.J. Wickendall, Pam Wills, Sherry Dakey, Riley Galloway, Vicki Kaufman, Paige Walton, as well as those we name in our hearts before you now. Grant to each renewed health according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our leaders. Bless our President Joe, our Vice President Kamala, our Governors Laura and Mike, Senators, members of Congress, mayors, judges, and others in positions of authority. Help them to serve with honor and with integrity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as National Lutheran Schools Week begins, we thank you for the gift of Lutheran schools and for our own Trinity Lutheran Church Preschool. Thank you for the opportunities you provide us to share Jesus' love with your little ones. Bless students, families, and teachers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for the gift of life. We pray for the poor, the disadvantaged, the widowed, the aged, the unborn, for all who need a special measure of our care and of your protection. Help us to support those in difficult and even desperate circumstances in their time of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for your goodness in our lives. We rejoice with all those who celebrate birthdays, anniversaries, and other life milestones. Give us thankful hearts that acknowledge your blessings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now we have the great joy and privilege of coming to the table of the Lord, that our God who has loved us, our God who has sent us out to bear witness to his love to the rest of the world, also calls us back that he might continually feed and strengthen us. One of the ways he does so is through this meal we call Holy Communion, where we believe Christ comes among us in this miraculous way with his very own body and blood that he shed on the cross to strengthen our faith, to help us believe, to step out in courage, to share that faith with others. So the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them and said, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way also he took the cup after supper and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink of it all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We join in praying the prayer he taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord gives us this meal as a meal of his forgiveness and grace. We believe he intends this meal for all those who desire that gift of forgiveness and grace in their lives. And so if you're a baptized Christian who recognizes your sin, recognizes your need for a Savior, and who trusts in the promise of forgiveness that is offered to us here in this meal, we would welcome you to come and receive that grace with us in this special way. Welcome to the table of the Lord. You may be seated. Shattered by the fall Broken and forgotten Feeling lost and all alone Summoned by the king Into his master's course And lifted by the savior And cradled in his arms Carried to the table
stand. Now may this, the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and keep you in true faith to life everlasting. Go now in his peace and joy. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We join in the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Receive the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord, look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We join our closing song. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his soul. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.